I think that meetings can be maybe not as productive pound for pound, minute by minute, but they can be more insightful because a lot of things happen in the white space when you're taking a shower, when you're on the commute, when you're walking the dog. Business is messy and unpredictable. Sometimes lonely. So lonely. So lonely. <laughs> and inspiration can often come from really weird places. We pick up where the bullet point blogs and the highlight reels leave off. We start with the stories. Welcome back to So Here's My Story. I'm Jody. I'm Elliot. And I am crushed. You are. I'm crushed. I put out a specific request and plea that we get a couple more members in the Facebook group so we and, can hit 50. And what happened? And we haven't had any. Oh, that's devastating. Not even one. That's devastating. Tom, you know, don't take out those sniffs. They're there for dramatic effect. It would be it would be cool if we could put a guilt trip <laughs> on our community. That would be really nice. No, no, no. Not a guilt trip. You know what it is? It's a welcome invitation. Because here's what's interesting. We actually, we get a notification when somebody clicks the button on the Facebook page that says visit the group, you know, the yes. sort of like action button. And we had like four or five of those. So you knocked but you didn't come in. So no, please. and it's, it's my bad. I misinterpreted the sniffs as a guilt trip as opposed to a no. welcome invitation. Well, no, that was my, that was a guilt trip. Those were oh, my okay. sadness. There you go. Now Good. it's a, well, I don't Good. sniff to welcome people. Well, in. so I was weird. just saying, yeah. Anyway, so onward up. We, if, if you were, uh, you know what? We would love to have you. Yes, welcome we would. invitation. Yes, we would. So on to business. What I wanted to introduce today's story, because it's your story, yep. and I thought it was really interesting. What I really took from it is kind of, I was thinking about the spinning plates of different priorities and where we got to was how to support those plates with more than just one finger, you know, how oh, to, yeah. how to <laughs> yeah, keep them going. To put it. So, so how to support those spinning priorities. And we had the benefits of when particularly men are better at speaking shoulder to shoulder and when they are not. There you go. So here's my story. It's a story of good things and bad things and ups and downs. And <laughs> Twists and turns. <laughs> Twists and turns. No, but it is. I mean, I, I'm sure over and over again, we have referred to the um, a couple of those favorite phrases I have of, you know, progress looks like a new set of problems or, you know, every every solution comes with a new set of problems. And um, I, I've been like live living that this past year. And so... And then I came to an interesting conclusion this past week. So, so really, truly, here is my story. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you for that preamble, bum, though. Bum, that was bum. nice. It was like a bad trailer. So, last year in 2018, I had my best year ever. Mm -hmm. So, it, this is one of those like good news, bad news, good news, bad news. Um, I had my best year ever, which which was really fantastic. I I build like two and a half times what I ever made when I was like working full time, which is more than I'd ever actually even aimed to make. So I, yeah. I exceeded even like my stretch goals. In fact, I didn't even realize it until about a week ago, I was like pulling some stuff together and I was like, oh my goodness, look how much <laughs> I build a holy cow. So all that sounds like really great news. And it is, um, it's not bad, but but it came with consequences. Um, I I have I have had a Fitbit all last year, and because I was working a lot more, I was sitting a lot more. And I kid you not, there were days where I had like, un there were many many days where I had like under two thousand steps. There were there were not a few number of days where I had under a thousand steps um, because I was doing so much work, and um, so that's not good. <laughs> No, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. And I was super stressed. And I, I went to all my kids' things. It's not like I missed kids' things because I still prioritize them. I was there in body. I don't know that I was always entirely there in spirit. That is certainly true for times we were like watching movies, even if I was disciplined enough to not have out my phone. I, I stopped taking my laptop out years ago, so I'm over that part of it. But I would have my phone there sometimes. Even if I don't have my phone there, my mind is still like, oh, yeah. shoot, I have to write down these things and I have to do this and I have to do that. Um, so it was just a year that is a, if I look back, it is a blur. I do this end of year kind of um, uh, uh, looking back reflection kind of exercise each year. And I try to do it this year. And honestly, it was like this I, 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 I <laughs> kind of year. So, um, and then my, my, and I don't think we've talked about this much on here. My December ended, I mean, my year ended with a December that was very intense and very sad. I yeah. lost my grandfather, yeah. my second, my second grandparent of, of the year to lose. Now I just have the one. And, um, and he and my grandmother have been together for close to 80 years. So, you know, really sad for my grandmother. So it was just a very 
tough end to an intense year. And, and it ended in a way that really had me conscious of time and how fast it goes. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I shared this with you. There was, um, as my grandfather was dying, I was sitting with my grandmother and I said, I'm so sorry you have to go through this. And and in full seriousness, she said, she goes, I know it's so hard. It's it's just, it's too soon. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I kind of laughed, chuckled, like not laughed at her. Um, yeah. but I chuckled. I was like, Oh, grandma, you know, 80, if 80 years isn't long enough, you know, you did something really, really right there. So all that goes together to say that I came into 2019 with a really solid focus on this year needs to be different in some way, in some substantial way. This is not about tweaking this or that. Like I either need to, to do less work, which I don't love the idea of. In fact, there's more people I want to work with. I, there's no one I'm working with right now that I that I'm ready to like kick to the curb. Um, I'm sure all your current clients who listen to this would be relieved to hear that. <laughs> like, whew, I'm not getting cut. Um, so it's, it's so that doesn't feel like quite the right answer. And so I've really been struggling on what what to change to to make this. So bum bum bum. Here's the punchline of the story. Enter either Monday or Tuesday of this week. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was Monday. Today. Yep. So it was Monday of this week. Um, friend of mine, I've, I've said, I want to go walking more. And uh, so he walks every day. And I said, whenever you go, just invite me wing by my office. If I'm available, I'm going to go. And he's like, well, it's too cold to walk outside. We walk at the mall. So I had to, <laughs> I had to stomach the part where I'm like, oh my God, I'm an elderly mall walker. Just, <laughs> do you get dinner at four now? <laughs> I know. Right. I, no, I, I kid you not. I did have to sort of go, oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I'm a mall walker. I'm a mall walker now. I, I will say I do not do the like dress with sneakers thing. That just, I just wear appropriate shoes to begin with. <laughs> anyway, so I went walking with him. We walked for an hour and a half around the mall. I got in just shy of like either 11 or 12,000 steps in this time. And we had the best business meeting that I have had in ages. So here's the epiphany. The reason I wanted to tell this story was not like to just Give everyone an update. It's not your like yearly update on Jody's life and business. I got to thinking after this walk about we work, I do, I, I do so much work with people on how to decide between competing priorities and how to how to choose what's most important and how to say no to things and how to this. And this entire week, I'm coming at I have all this new energy because I'm coming at it in a completely different ways of of looking at blending priorities, of, of, mm -hmm. of, of really just sort of ignoring this whole idea of competing priorities and saying, how can I do two things at once? How can I get, how can I, because it's not just a two birds, one stone. I mean, obviously I, I got a meeting in, I got to visit with a friend. I got 11,000 steps. That's amazing. That's, that's nice two birds or three birds with one stone. But I also, it was a more effective conversation because we were moving interestingly like I, we, we my creativity buzzed yeah. in ways that it didn't before that would normally we would have had that meeting over breakfast at Towson Diner while I was you know eating food and we would have not have got we would have had the same conversation we've had 20 times about this topic and it it popped differently so that's my fascination and uh at the moment and now you can talk <laughs> <laughs> well so there are a couple things with that one is i mean the the low-hanging fruit is just that there is something to um physical activity stimulating your brain i mean i know that i for sure I, pace when I'm on the phone and I'll be sitting there on the phone talking to somebody and literally sitting while talking to somebody until an issue comes up um, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. really actually requires um, some some strategy or engagement and I'll get up and I'll start pacing around. I'll do that in, in client meetings where I we're doodle. talking about certain things. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> but but I'll do that in client meetings and I'll say, look, I'm just going to get up and pace now. And I have to say that because Otherwise sometimes weird I just get up and they're like, oh, I guess the meeting's over. I was in the middle of a <laughs> sentence, but I, I guess that would be enough. So I'll tell them, but I will get up and I'll start to to pace sometimes depending upon, of course, I have to know them well and, and all this, sure. but, but it does um, make sense. And so walking meetings actually are tremendously effective. We, one of the things I like about this, this office space is there are, are some walking trails mm -hmm. here. And so obviously in January, it's, it's not great, but, um, I was doing walking meetings or talking to clients on the, on the cell and I just go outside and I, I do the walking trails. Um, is there a mall nearby? There is. Well, <laughs> I really did have trouble getting nearby. over the mall thing. Anyway, go ahead. Well, the mall thing, you know, you get the thing about the mall thing. This is my second is that 
when you're when you're walking on the trail, you're you're just walking, and most people, especially people with a greater level of coordination and and gross motor skills than I have, don't have to really think about walking all that much. So they can mm. just think about the topic. But I think that there's something to being in the mall because there's a lot of different distractions, a lot of things that occur to you. And if you're with a friend, and you can mix some some business, some catching up, some some just um, fluff conversation with the business. I think that there's I think that meetings can be maybe not as productive pound for pound, minute by minute, but they can be more insightful because a lot of things happen in the white space when you're taking a shower, when you're on the commute, when you're walking the dog. Well, here's the thing. that it, So, yes, here's what was interesting for me personally. Um, and, and this this I don't know. I don't know if this will translate to other people, but I I have been really looking at the at places where, because I don't consider myself someone who holds back in conversations, who doesn't, you know, doesn't speak up for myself, doesn't ask for what I need. But I have discovered that there is a certain sort of category of things that I that I don't speak up for myself around. Um, it's very specific, and I kind of didn't realize it till just recently. And one of those things came up in this conversation, and it was so interesting. It reminded me of something that someone told me about men, and they, they told it about in like uh, teenage boys specifically. But they were saying that men often do things shoulder to shoulder. Like women will sit down and like have lunch. They're looking eye to eye mm-hmm. when they communicate. A lot of the things that men do when they connect and are, are shoulder to shoulder. A much and, easier shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. And so you can still have very intimate experiences, but they're shoulder to shoulder. You're not staring at each other. So whether you're dry, it, it's why I think sometimes couples have really their most productive, most courageous conversations when they're driving in the car, you know, because you're, you're not staring at somebody. So there is something magic about that shoulder to shoulder thing that just gives you a little bit of space or detachment from the just raw eye to eye that makes it a little bit Brave, it makes it a little bit easier to be brave about saying something that maybe you wouldn't have before. Ex- except in the men's room, then there are no words. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying that don't there's speak. that's rule don't that you speak. don't speak. Yeah, fair enough. But fair other enough. than that, different yes. shoulder to shoulder situation. Yes, but other than that, yes. For I can't speak for my entire gender, although I have been elected to that position <laughs> in the past. But but yeah, shoulder Not to shoulder. Not just gender, actually, several things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But shoulder to shoulder is much easier to have discussions because there's something about pulling up to a table and just sitting each other like you're either playing a game of chess or you're just mm-hmm. you're just looking at somebody in the eye and you have to say certain things if it's going to be a difficult conversation, if you're worried that what you're going to bring up may sound stupid or make you vulnerable mm-hmm. or something like that. Shoulder to shoulder is much easier. Yeah, and, and so I noticed that even just in that walking, there were there was a moment in that conversation where where I was, I mean, it was still a little trepidatious for me, but I was able to like say the thing that I don't, I don't, I may have, because it is a focus area for me right now, maybe I would have gone ahead and said it if we were at the diner, but I I don't know. It certainly felt easier in that moment. Um, And so, and that, and that launched the conversation into a place we never would have gotten. And it was so important. Um, And so, so there was also that aspect to it. And and I want to be careful because I love this idea of working in physical activity into business things, certainly. Um, but I don't want the bigger point of what's possible, what I've been thinking about since that moment to get lost in just the notion of, well, how can I walk more when when I talk to people? Because I was thinking back to a client I had years ago who had, was very pressed for time. And there were a couple things that he was trying to do more of spending time with his boys. Um, he wanted to be doing more service. He didn't feel like he was doing anything good in the world. And, And one of the things he did was, was find a way to do a service kind of thing that involved the kids. Um, like right now, one of the things I'm looking at is finding ways to, to include my kids in some of the, the nutritional things that we're doing, like whether, whether we look at growing something or whether we look at like them helping with cooking or something um, to expand my daughter's interest in food. Like those are things that, 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 and I also want to spend more time with her. So those are things we can do together. So you can take, there was a book years ago. I should have looked it up before I came in. I'll find it to make sure Christy has it for the notes. Um, It's a leadership book that, that I read a bajillion years ago and it has to do with all these uh, a very similar similar thing to this of you have all these these circles of your life, you know, home and um, all these priorities that you have, and the more that you can overlap them, you know, a way that this makes perfect sense is, you know, if your job is something that you were also really passionate about, that's two overlapped circles. You could certainly find have your job be separate from your passion, that's fine, um, but ways that you can take 
priorities priorities and blend them so that you're not um, you don't have as many competing priorities. I, I, th- this is this is what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like there's only so much we can say no to sometimes there's, there's, there's so many things so many of us are trying to do to kind of pack in a full life (laughs) that, um, that having good competing priority skills only gets you so far. It's, it kind of feels like next level hack of making the most out of the time we have here, you know, cause when 80 years isn't enough, yeah, but you've got to make the most of it. (laughs) And I understand that it's just that there are, I guess I'm of two minds with it because I understand that, the more your priorities compete, the less effective you can be in meeting any of them. Um, Unless you just tell one to go away. Right. right. But, so you're, yeah. but, or at least in meeting, the less effective you can be in meeting all of them, I should have said. Um, but at the same time, there, there is also something that can be said about not blending work and home or this and home too much, you know, so the, the isolation is, is something that I think is interesting, but I I did want to make one other point before we move on about the shoulder to shoulder thing, because I was thinking about it in terms of both giving comfort to the speaker and comfort to the listener, because when you're Mm. across the, the table, if there's a difficult conversation, uh, and if something vulnerable for me, I may not want you to see how vulnerable it is yeah. or how yep. I appear when I say that. But at the same time, if it's going to be a difficult conversation, there is shelter in allowing the listener yeah. to be distracted by the Nordstrom display <laughs> or to be pretending to look over at the whatever. To not have to stare you to in not the have eye. To stare while you in the eye anything. while processing yeah. whatever it is. So. So I think there's oh, that's also huge. That's part of it, and I didn't want to get away from that. No, I'm glad you brought that up because that was actually another part of the conversation we had, where where I needed to say something that I knew would make him uncomfortable, and that part didn't feel hard for me to say, but I knew it was going to be hard for him to hear. Yeah, and I think it allowed him the space. Like the first thing was hard for me to say, so I felt it there. The second time, I hadn't really thought of it until you said it, but it gave him the space to just sort of be like staring at the ground as we walked while I said the thing. It gave him if we were walking so. So it wasn't as awkward to have those few seconds of him just to digest for a second. And then he's like, okay, here's what I think. And, and we moved on from there. So you're absolutely right. It gives both people just a little bit of space. Um, and interestingly though, you could say the same thing about the phone. The phone can do that, except then you're just still in your own space. And there's like this, this blind gap, you, you know, you don't know for sure that the other person's not right there. So it just, it feels even better than that. Well, the phone, the phone, you're right. You have this blind gap. So you say something that, that you needed to say, but as part of, is your part of the difficult conversation. And then there's silence. And so when there's silence, the other person may be processing, mm-hmm. but we fill in, as we've talked about, we fill in our own narrative when there's a vacuum. Mm-hmm. So you start thinking, oh, well, maybe, maybe she didn't even hear what I said. Mm-hmm. Maybe I offended maybe her. Maybe the line went, did maybe, I lose the, are you there? Or yeah, can you hear me now? Hung up. <laughs> maybe, you know, so you have all this stuff. And so you're, you're not watching the other person. So the other person doesn't have all of the time they need to process because you're like, I'm sorry, did you hear me? Or you feel right. compelled to fill in the silence with more explanation of the difficult point and yep. you're yep. depriving them somehow. Yeah. So, so I want to, I don't want to lose track of what you were saying about the isolation piece. Um, poor Christy, we're like bouncing left, right over centers. <laughs> but she's good. Um, she's that she's good. She's so good at yeah. doing the show notes um, that we trust. You'll be able to pull it together. Um, the isolation thing. Yeah, I do want to be really clear. What I'm not talking about is, you know, like working on, you know, processing emails while you watch a movie with your family. That, right. I'm not talking about multitasking exactly. Um, there are things that want your undivided full attention, but that's actually the point though. Like, like, like if you want to be outside more and you also, I'm trying to think of things off the top of my head that, that don't feel too complicated to compete. You know, like you want to be outside more. This is an easy one. You want to be outside more and you want to read more. Well, you can read outside. I mean, that's a very the simple, you know, like elementary level of what I'm talking about. But I think if you actually spend a little time with this exercise and like, where, where can I combine things so that I'm not having to choose between different things? Like for instance, here's, here's a great one. I really want to be practicing my guitar more often. And I want to be seeing more of my friends more often. Both those things are on my indulgent list. So they're not quite competing priorities. They're both sort of in the same bucket of just for fun would be a lot of fun, but you know, they're not the, they're not the first thing I put in a lot of times. Well, 
I have a friend who's also just learning to play guitar. So I could see that friend and we could practice guitar a little bit. That doesn't get me practicing guitar every single week, but maybe I see her every other week for a little while or something. You know, it's going to be different for everybody, but I really have been enjoying this, this discipline of scanning for, are there things I could combine that would actually be even more fun than either of those individual things. And and that therefore also ups their priority level. But a lot of the technology is actually moving that way. So that, so that for example, you know, and I've joked around before, I have my Apple Watch and the fitness thing, but a lot of the Apple Watch and the Fitbit, they invite you to form a group with your friends, like Peloton, for example, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, the, the stationary bike company, and they have their apps, and they invite you to go virtual biking with your friends. Now, right. whether you're a fan or not, what that does, is if you want to make it a priority to catch up with your friends, stay engaged with your friends on some activity. Mm -hmm. And you also go to the gym and you're not in the same area or same schedule or Mm -hmm. whatever as your friends. You have the ability to do that. One of the things that I like to do that I always have on my to-do list is to spend a little while reading something, whether it's the latest business book or I just finished the latest Stephen King that came out, Mm -hmm. whatever it is. And what I've been giving some thought to is is figuring out just going on the social media networks uh, on my platforms and figuring out which of my friends does the same thing, because I know a number of them do, and then can say, okay, let's pick a book. Mm. and do this. And then you can start to combine keeping yep. engaged and your your interests as opposed to viewing them in silos. So I'm, so I'm starting to actually think about this a little bit differently than when I came in to the episode. Maybe it's, yes, I think it's about kind of bucking the idea of, of comp- or, or, or just not as easily giving over to the idea of competing priorities, um, looking for ways to combine them. But the other thing about it is that when you combine them, I think the real value in it is that it it provides greater meaning and significance to um, to those things. So like reading on its own is, is one priority, but it's easy one to easily slough off. Well, now you have a commitment with a friend that's also yeah. social time and it has the commitment piece. So now both those things are at, are like harnessed to something that has greater meaning and greater accountability to it. Same way with the walking. So we've, we've gone walking every day this week, except today. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we went all three days. Um, I have gotten, you know, 12, 13,000 steps. And I kid you not, you look back at my, my, my chart has had to all adjust because there are many days like today, actually, sadly today I have 2,500 steps. So yeah, yeah. And it is, and the day is almost over. It is late in the day. So it was, I did not go walking today. So it, it's, that is a huge, now if I just, I could have just as easily committed to myself, I'm going to get up every morning at 530 and walk and I would have gotten just as many steps, but it wouldn't have been as fun. Frankly, I wouldn't have done it. Um, he and I are going walking tomorrow. So it increases your chances of doing it. Now, these are all like sort of, well, I think, friends, I think but. what you're really talking about, or to me, the way I, please tell me what the, I'm talking well, about. Well, the way I see it is that <laughs> it's the art of using one priority to support another priority. It's like legs on a stool so that I have a yeah. priority of health health, right? So I want to do my walking. And that's, Mm -hmm. it's like a one legged stool. There's one support. I have health and then I have walking. But if I have two priorities, health and engagement with certain friends, Mm -hmm. and I can accomplish them, then I have two legs supporting this or two, two foundations to support that. And if we have a business purpose for getting together, so it's friends and business, and then the health thing. So the more you use your priorities to support each other, the more likely you are to accomplish them. Ding. Yay. So that's our story. But the discussion doesn't have to end here. No, it does not. In fact, we don't want it to. No, we don't. (laughs) That is why we actually have our private Facebook group. Which we started to make sure that we could get your comments, your rants, your thoughts. Your stories. Your stories. You can find links to that group as well as show notes and links to subscribe via email and how to find us just about anywhere you can possibly find podcasts at SoHere'sMyStory.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at SHMS Podcast. And since we know it takes a village. Yes, it does. (laughs) We'd like to thank 
our village, our super talented, incredibly patient team. And occasionally snarky Ooh, team. Yeah, but in the best of ways. In the best Lovingly of ways. Snarky. Yes. <laughs> Good mockery. So, so a huge shout out to the people who actually help us produce our show. Uh, first, our sound engineer, Tom Hansen. Thanks to Christy Schmier for our brilliant show notes and all the other fantastic writing she does for us. And to Taylor Mathauer for doing just a little bit of everything. Including wrangling us. Including wrangling us. <laughs> Which is no small feat. No, it's not. This is Jody Hume. And I'm Elliot Wagenheim. And you've been listening to So Here's My Story. 